One, two, one, two. Welcome to Beacon of Speech. I'm Fred Hunt, and across the table from me is Ted Coley. Hi, Ted Coley. Hi, Fred Hunt. How are you? I'm fine. Uh, it has been three weeks since we last did a webcast. Is that correct? I think it's been four weeks. Four weeks. Well, we'll tell our magical three listeners what happened. Fred got terminated from Iron it Mountain. It was very sad. Much upheaval. Much upheaval, yes. Um, long story short, um, Fred got two yellow cards at Iron Mountain, and after the second yellow card, that's a red card. But instead of getting kicked out of the game, they kicked me out of Iron Mountain. That's very sad. <laughs> Fifteen years down the drain. Should we have a weeping noise at this point? <laughs> we are not going to dwell, but we are going to explain our situation. We are back at Fred's house. And we are in the sweat box. <laughs> Two weeks ago, it was May 15th, and we had snow. I had to bring in my plants because it went down to 30 degrees. You remember that, Ted Coley? Yes, I did. Uh, so I brought in the plants two weeks ago, and I was mad. I watched the news. They said, oh, uh, you know, it's the latest snow we've had in Cleveland in 50 years. Do you remember that? Yeah. It was on Cleveland.com. It was, oh, you know, uh, maybe it's going to be a cool... A cool uh, summer, right? Literally two weeks later, it's 90 degrees. I didn't turn on my air conditioner, you know, because I'm unemployed and we're trying to save money, <laughs> right? But it's 90 degrees literally two weeks later, later, and me and Ted are sitting in the sweat box. Are you sweating yet, Ted? Kind of, yeah. Um, <laughs> Do you want me to move the fan? <laughs> you know what I was going to say? It seems like... It seems like Memorial Day weekend, at least recently, is usually hot. Yeah. And... It's pretty early, you know, it's not even summer yet. No. And it's, it's summer temperatures. No, it's too early to be hot. And we aren't going to complain about the weather or else we'll lose our three listeners. Mm -hmm. But even my son was heckling me. He's like, oh, you don't have that many listeners, Dad. <laughs> I'm like, thanks, Alex. You're a great kid. So, but uh, that's where we stand. So we are in a new place, but hopefully we will get a new home one day. Wouldn't that be great, Ted? We're like uh, the little... We're like gypsies. <laughs> We're the gypsy webcast. Maybe we could uh, teach people how to cast spells. Um, if you come to my house in uh, North Ridgeville, Ted will read your poems for 20 bucks. <laughs> Actually, screw you, Ted. You got the money. I, I will read your poems for $20. If you wait another couple of weeks, maybe you'll have to turn it into sexual favors or something. Um, I did invite poor Joe Kaufman um, to come out. Um... But since I am terminated, right, um, tomorrow, tomorrow starts the Memorial Day weekend, Saturday of Memorial Day. Um, what is Joe doing? He is working. What is he doing Sunday of Memorial Day? Actually, now I found out he is not working Ooh. because he'll have too many hours. <laughs> so, so they, they would have let him work, but they don't want... Because they have the cap on the overtime. And right. then he is working Memorial Day. Right. So do you think that now we're going to make a prediction, okay? And remind me, I haven't had the predictions. The prediction notebook is downstairs. I'm right. going to have to bring that upstairs. But do you think that Joe will venture out here to do a webcast with us, or do you think we're going to have to find a new home and pay him? <laughs> mm, wow. I don't – I think he will. I think he'll come out here. Okay. It's just, it's hard to come out when you're working 20 days in a row. Yeah. So, poor Joe. I love Joe. Joe's awesome. Yeah, because like I said, I looked on the schedule and it said Kaufman, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Right. But then, uh, before I left, I talked to uh, Ryan. Right. And he said that he was working Sunday. Oh, uh, poor Joe. We want you to work every day, but we don't want to pay you for every day. That, that kind of sucks. Mm-hmm. So, let's not dwell on Fred's old company, and uh, I'm sure it'll come up once in a while, but um, part of the reason we waited a few weeks was because of me. So much for being quiet over here. Oh, yeah, I know. I, I hear motorcycles and fans and everything. Um, it's, it's quiet until we start the show. <laughs> and people are screaming bloody murder. Well, my son, I'm sure he'll be back screaming bloody murder. Um, we were playing football in the front yard, and we were playing catch, and looked at he went to catch the ball right by his waist, and the football hit him in the hand, right? Mm -hmm. Dad, I think you broke my finger. I'm like, I threw the ball to you. You was by your waist. He's like, well, why'd you throw it like that? I'm like, why'd you want me to throw it? <laughs> 
If it didn't hit you in the hand, it would have hit you in the stomach. <laughs> so I don't know what he was looking for. So he's angry it, with me. You don't me. think it's broken, do you? No, I don't think it is. But th that's my luck. You know what I mean? We're between insurances, and he'd probably be like, "Oh no, it's really broke." So. And again, I wasn't trying to. I wasn't, you know, throwing it over his head and making him dive or anything. I was throwing it to his chest. So I guess instead of Did hitting you him throw, in the chest, throw him a change up or something. <laughs> I ain't even like gun it. It was like a big rainbow pass. So, but I did not want to dwell on bad things. I not want to dwell on Iron Mountain. But uh, in case anybody asks, I did change it on my profile, so people know that I I don't work there anymore. And like I said, our three listeners, I think they all know that you know I'm not working there anymore. Now, does Dave know of this? Uh Devel development yes uh, i sent him an instant message and so he goes wow <laughs> and then that was it and it was like <laughs> just silence it's like okay man a few words yeah so he, he's i'm sure he is putting in a good word with the man upstairs with me <laughs> so we are going to start on our first topic of the day now first topic of the day is science ted do you love science science <laughs> i yeah. was Every day for the last month, I've been looking on CNN, right? And every day in the last month, guess what one of the three or four top stories is? Um, I'll say climate change. No. Donald Trump. Donald Trump is here. Donald Trump said that. The Mexicans are protesting Donald Trump. Hillary's mad at Donald Trump. This guy's supporting Donald Trump. This guy's not supporting Donald Trump. I'm like, it is literally like... There is no other news in the world, right? Now, my whole argument is you reap what you sow. You know what I mean? If you're going to pick Donald Trump, and you like Donald Trump. Well, I'll vote for him, but oh, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of, I he, he's like a, the, a wild card. You yeah. don't know what he's going to do. Yeah. But I'm tired of reading about him, and every day, like, on the bottom... It has, like, a science section on CNN. And they, like, four oh, times... Yeah. Let me let oh, the oh, dog out. Oh, great. Now you're going to bark during the <laughs> webcast. You're an awesome dog. Okay, Ted, um, count to ten. I'll be right back. See, we're going to... I'm going to take off the headset. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I rock. Wow. I get, like, a, I get like a ten second head start. It's almost like we're playing that death game, you know, where, uh, what was it, they're going to shoot Gilligan on Gilligan's <laughs> Island? And he's like, oh no, Gilligan, we're hunting you, we're going to count to ten, and then he kind of hops up and he runs away. That was me doing the letting the dumb dog out, so he wouldn't start barking on the webcast. That's why he was barking? Yeah. He, yeah. he wants out, and uh, I'm going to let him out. Next time I'm not going to leave him on the chain, I'll let him out and see if he wants to run to Quebec or something. <laughs> um, but so on the bottom of CNN... Literally, there's news every day. Oh, that was a button I hit. I'm sorry, Ted. Um, I'm reading about this science stuff, and it's really intriguing, really interesting stuff. And I'm like, why isn't this the lead story? This is like universe stuff. Like when me and you were in elementary school or middle school, think back to when you were a kid, um, you learned about the nine planets, right? Mm -hmm. And... The science textbooks are pretty static. Wouldn't you say that's, that was fair? How many times did your science teacher come in and go, oh, there's a new planet, oh, there's a new comet, oh, the, they discovered, you know, this or that? No, that never happens. I don't, re I, I don't ever recall that, right? In the last month, and this is the interesting thing, okay, there's a dwarf planet called Maki Maki. Are you familiar with Maki Maki? No. Okay. Beyond Pluto... Sounds like a Chinese dish. <laughs> Actually, when I, when I first heard it, I thought it was a, a Hawaiian island. Okay? I ain't even... A, it's a dwarf planet outside of Pluto in the Kuiper Belt. And it's... Basically, the Kuiper Belt is the asteroid belt beyond Pluto. Now, you're familiar with the Kuiper Belt, I'm sure. I've heard of it. Yeah. The whole reason that Pluto was demoted, what, what year was that? About 2007, 2008, when they made Pluto not a planet? Yeah, I, I, remember, I don't remember the year, but it sounds it, about It was right. five to ten years ago. Now, when we were kids, they didn't add planets. They didn't demote planets. They, it seems like everything is so new since they got the Hubble and all this state-of-the-art technology, 
right? Well, the story on CNN that was so interesting was they discovered that Maki Maki has a satellite. It's a dwarf planet beyond Pluto, and they said it has a satellite. And they said a generation ago, they didn't know it was there. They didn't know the dwarf planets could have satellites because they didn't know Pluto had a satellite, right? And the way it, it seems like the information is coming at us exponentially yeah. at this point. You know, I'm, hey, you know, my son, I'm like, hey, son, did you see this on the thing? Did you, did your, your science teacher talk about this? He's like, well, my science teacher didn't talk about it, but you're talking about mm -hmm. it. You know, my, my dad watched the news. My grandfather watched the news. What's his science teacher talking about, Donald Trump? <laughs> Probably. But that's the whole thing. And it's amazing to me where we've come in a generation because this whole Maki Maki thing, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really matter. But this whole Donald Trump thing, you know, I've seen this before. This is, I, this is populism at its best. That's all it is. And it's a, some rich guy. And, I mean, I've made the comparison to Putin. And, you know, whether you agree or disagree, I'm not the only one who says it. Okay? People compare him to Hitler. I don't think he's like Hitler at all. Okay? And I'll tell you, I'll tell you why I don't think he's like Hitler. Okay, Hitler was all about building Germany up and killing Jews. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, how do you build Germany up? Well, through slave labor and then blah, 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 right? Putin is more like, hey, we're all getting rich. You know what I mean? We're all getting rich. And then, oh, well, when I say we all are getting rich, I mean me and my buddies, you know, the poor Russians, <laughs> they're, they're out of it. And if you're my political enemy, you know, you're, you're screwed, okay? But... That's why the, the analogy to Hitler I don't think is fair, but I think the comparison to Putin is. Well, one, one funny thing, I don't know if you heard this, but uh, I guess there's a bunch of celebrities who are threatening to leave the country oh, if, yeah. if Donald Trump wins. Yeah. And I guess uh, one of them was Rosie O'Donnell. Oh. <laughs> and then Donald Trump said, now I have to win. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's he whole... said, I have to win for the country now. <laughs> That's all the, they they have I saw that same list. I should have wrote it down. Because I'm like Good. See you later. <laughs> you know, it's not like my favorite celebrities. You know what I mean? You say, Well, who's your favorite celebrity? And I'm like, I kinda like the dad from the middle, okay? He's not on the list of crazy celebrities. I like some of the guys uh, like I watch PTI all the time on ESPN, uh, mm -hmm. Michael Wilborn and uh Tony Kornheiser. They're not saying they're going to move to Canada. You know what I mean? The celebrities that I like, they weren't on that list. The people who were on that list, were any of them people that you liked? Where you're like, oh, I, I, I... No. No. Because I saw it, and I'm like, well, good riddance to them. I think Lena Dunham was one. See, I'm not sure who that is. She did a series called Girls, but I was never that impressed with that series. My wife watched it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know who she is. And Rosie O'Donnell, which you know... Rosie O'Donnell is like, you know, one of those old comedians that, like, they used to be funny, and you're like, you're not funny anymore. Yeah, I was just watching, speaking of Rosie O'Donnell, I was just watching A, a League of Their Own. Well, she was good in that. Yeah. And that's the thing. A lot of comedians get old, and they forget that they were comedians. Like, they're just ang angry old people. And that's what the impression I get with it. Um, um, Rosie O'Donnell is. She's just angry and old. Mm -hmm. Didn't you? Your job is to be a comedian. You know, I was watching. You doing all right, Alex? Yeah, I just got to wash my hands. We're out. So okay. Fast. I was watching a special on uh, Seinfeld, and they were saying that he wants to do a little more edgier stuff. Seinfeld. Yeah. But he wants. He basically wants to go from PG to PG thirteen material. You know what I mean? Because oh. Oh, I've been married for 25 years. Well, what do you, you know, or 15 years. The observational humor, but a little edgier, a little, you know, grittier. But he's not up there saying, I've been married 25 effing years. <laughs> you know, like he's Eddie Murphy at 22. You know what I mean? Yeah. But Jerry Seinfeld still understands that he's a comedian. You know what I mean? But now he's got a certain, I think he understands he has a certain amount of freedom. You know what I mean? And it was funny because I was on the Daily Mail, and the Daily Mail was uh, talking about, uh, oh, geez, I lost my thought. They were talking about uh, Jerry Seinfeld and uh, 
you know, what his next project was. And I'm like, he doesn't have to have a next project. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because they said everybody knows his old stuff. And you know how you said everything relates to Seinfeld? Ted, yeah. you're not the only one who says that. I mean, you're always right about stuff like that. But, I mean, I've been seeing that. Everything ties back in. The, the minutiae of everyday life ties yeah, and back in. Yeah, there's no other show that's like that. Yeah. I mean, where you can apply it to everyday life. It's it's incredible. Yes. Are you looking for me? Shoes. Are you going outside? Uh, yes. Uh, make sure you don't uh, be mean to any ducks. Okay. Alex is going outside. Alex uh, is. If you see the ducks not by the front door, let me know. He's very helpful. <laughs> I'm not sure what he's looking for, but he keeps wa he keeps walking back and forth from our. Oh, my our shoes. Okay. okay. Good job. <laughs> Anyhow, um, so I'm tired of reading about Trump. And then there was another article. It was about a, another dwarf planet. Okay, for some reason, these dwarf planets fascinate me to no end. The name of the planet, and I, I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget, is planet 2007 OR, as in Oregon, 2 to 10th power. Right? Now, that also is in the, in the Kuiper Belt. And the article was, the, the planet is the same size as Pluto. And it's the same size as Maki Maki. It's right in the same ballpark. It, they're not exactly the same size, but same ballpark. And they said somehow, Pluto was discovered in 1931-ish, 1932. Oh, was that late? I think it was. Maybe it was the 1800s. No matter what, Pluto's, they've known about Pluto since at least 1930. Would you say that's fair? Yeah, at least since I was in grade school, I know that. So, again, literally, like, three days after the Maki Maki story, they're like this, you know, 2007 OR to the 10th power. They're like, it's the same size as Pluto, and somehow it has evaded us for 100 years. We didn't even see it. It's like, how did we miss a planet the size of Pluto? And so their new theory is that in the Kuiper Belt, there's a planet X, which is the size of Neptune, and I read about that in the last month. It's right? the size of Neptune? That's the size of Neptune. That's, that's pretty big. And this whole uh, planet 2007 OR to the 10th power, his, they said, how did, how did we miss that for 100 years? Well, they said it's because their old model of what a dwarf planet, what a planet was, they didn't think they could exist so far. But, and another, they said they found an exoplanet between here and the Andromeda system that's not attached to a star. They said it's just drifting in space. And they said they think that's a first. And literally, like, every day in science, there's a new planet discovery. I'm like, this is fascinating. I mean, you could literally keep typing the science book, and it's like you open a computer, and then by fall, it's out of date. As soon as you type up the science book, it's already out of date. Planet that's drifting in space? Yeah. The, they said it was, and I didn't write down the name It'd of that like one. would be like me as a planet. <laughs> Ted is, Ted's not looking for a He's not looking for a star. He's going to be his own planet. <laughs> so that's why I'm like, it's amazing to me that these aren't the lead stories. And I understand that kids are like, yeah, who cares? It's science. Okay? Because when you were a kid, there were kids that were like that too. But you would think that that would drive some sort of traffic. But it seems like, uh, and I've been uh, acutely noticing this in the last month, I see Cardassians on CNN, and I've talked about this before. News is what drives clicks. You know, what drives traffic. Not what is news. Now, you could argue with me. You could turn around and say, who cares about 2007 OR to the 10th power? You know, that literally is nothing. You're never going to go there. You're never going to meet anybody from there. You're never going to do anything. But I don't know. I think it's interesting. Yeah. I think that's like real news. Mm -hmm. You know, not um, you know the uh, the latest the latest thing I saw be when I was doing the prep right before you came over was Trump fifty miles from Mexican border. Mexicans greet him waving the flag. See, I know this has been going on for two months. I'm like, I, I get it. I, you, at this point, you aren't reporting news you're driving the story yeah. you see what i'm saying yeah and when i was younger rush limbaugh used to say this stuff all the time he used to talk about driving stories 
And I never, I mean, I understood it. But now that I'm older, I, like, see it more clearly. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because another science thing that I saw was, and literally two days ago, okay, the newest story was scientists estimate that 60% of the universe is dark matter. Well, they said it's dark matter and you can't see it. It's because it's, it's the business end of a black hole, right? Well, you can't see the business end of the black hole because it's crushed matter. And I'm like, I don't know. I'm not a theoretical physicist, so it's kind of lost on me. But you think that would be a big deal. What's 60% of the universe? We don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's not just, you know, like planets. Like I, I was reading about there is a... So it's 60% of an amount that they don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, it's not just that. Like, they got some sort of superbug in uh, Pennsylvania that it can't be treated by antibiotics. So it was the first time they found it in America. Did you hear about that? Oh, uh, yeah, I think I did hear about that. Some, some lady had, like, a urinary tract infection. Right. Is, yep. that, is that what it was? I believe it was. Yeah. And it was in Pennsylvania, and they said their last line of defense did not stop it. And now they're like, well, now what do we do? That's what I was going to ask. Well, what happened with that lady? What happens if you can't treat that? Well, I, that's the whole thing. You know, they have these stories. I mean, does that is that is that something that just runs it, its course? Let, let, I'm going to write this down. Let me circle back around because I'm going to give you an example. Okay? Untreatable lady. I'm re writing it down. Okay? I just read a story today on the USA Today, and they said Al Alzheimer's... Um, is partially caused by the immune system. What happens is um, Alzheimer's is... What happens is when you get an infection, the body attacks the infection, right. and then whatever is left over kind of accumulates in the brain. Right? And I'm like, wow, that's fascinating. But that's what, the, Whatever is left over, do you mean the infection or the white blood cells? The white blood cells. Accumulate like the, in your brain. Yeah, the white blood cells or the plaque or whatever. Oh, so they, the brain becomes like the dumping ground for right. used up. Right. Okay. Now, that is fine, okay? Now, I'm not... This is the science that is a little dicier, okay? Now, if I only read that story this week, I'd be like, oh, wow, that's fascinating. But last week, I read that you could get Alzheimer's from, uh, what is that medicine for Harper? Um, like ro Rolaids or? Well, no, no. Uh, th there's a classification of Harper medicine. Do you know what it's called? Um, it's not antacids. Uh, maybe it is antacids. But they said Alzheimer's, if you take antacids, you got a 50% chance better a better chance of getting Alzheimer's. And I'm like, huh. And then the week before that, it was, if you are diabetic, you are 33% more likely to get Alzheimer's because the sugar... You see what I'm yeah. saying? And it's like, it's almost like they're spitballing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, but that doesn't help. And so when they're talking about these planets, that's like hard data. You know what I mean? They know where the, the thing is. So they're like, oh, well, if you do take sugar, too much sugar might cause Alzheimer's. And then they find out 10 years later, oh, no, that was wrong. You know, we only had a limited si sample size. So this whole Alzheimer's things, literally every week I've been reading Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's. I'm like, well, it makes me wonder, and I can't claim this as original idea. I, I, I've been reading out message boards. People are throwing, like, we think that antacids cause... Alzheimer's, will you give us $2 million to study the cause and effect yeah. of it? You know, so now at this point, you're spitballing trying to get grant money. You see what I'm saying? And so, again, it goes back to, is it real science or is it media-driven? Now, does that grant money come from the government? Some of it does, yes. Some of it? Okay. But some of it is private corporations. Okay. Like, let, let, and let's use Alzheimer's as an as, uh, example. Let's say that you work at a, at a company and you think that you can cure Alzheimer's, right? Um, what's a big uh, drug company? Pfizer? Yeah. You go to Pfizer and say, listen, I know antacids. That causes Alzheimer's. Um, I'm making 100 grand a year. Um, 
kick up my salary, you know, the Jason way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> kick up my salary, I'll work 100 hours a week, um, and give me um, X amount of dollars and uh, this research. Stuff. So it's not just public money, it's private money too. You see what I'm saying? But then at the end, they could come back with a study that says, oh, no, there's no correlation. Well, you got paid. Mm. You know what I mean? So, so the scam works two ways. Now, let's turn around. Let's circle back to the untreatable bug to the lady in Pennsylvania. Okay? Mm. They said she has the untreatable bug. Um, once people get the untreatable bug, it's hard to treat them. The only thing you can kind of do is regulate their water you know, keep the diarrhea away, you know what I mean, mm. flush them full of water, make sure they have their liquids, make sure they're healthy, blah, blah, blah. But they didn't say what they treated them with, right? Now, I don't know if they're not telling because it's a secret. I don't know if they don't have a treatment. And they're like, well, hopefully you get better. You know, like some of those people when they had Ebola, before they had the vaccine, they're like, well, they're going to have to fight it. Yeah. Well, how are you fighting it? Well, we're, we're keeping them hydrated. You know, because part of the thing is, is that you, you got um, diarrhea and vomiting so bad that you, you dehydrate and that, that shuts the systems down. So I don't know if that's what they're doing, the lady in Pennsylvania, or... But again, you know, going back to your point, they didn't report it. They didn't report what they were doing. They're like, oh, she's screwed. <laughs> and uh, uh, back to sports, Toronto versus Cleveland, right? Yeah, I did hear about that today, though. And they said they, they, they tried the strongest antibiotic, but they, they didn't say what it was, though, right? I, I did read what the antibiotic was, but they said it's literally the last one. And then, like, um, part of the problem is, like, say you get strep throat or your kid gets strep throat. They give you, like, z pack, right? And that's, like, a level 2 antibiotic. And I might have my numbers backwards, but it's like scale 1 to 10. And I can't remember if 10 is the highest or if 1 is the highest. Well, I remember one of the magazines that you had was uh -huh. talking about antibiotics. Do you yeah. remember that? Oh, yeah. But z pack is like the second from the lowest level. You take it, I take it, the kid take it. They're like Tic Tacs. Okay? Once you get up to the top level, that's the one that they gave to her, and it didn't work. Because they don't want the, the bugs to get an immunity to the top level one. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Are the ducks doing okay, Alex? Alex is checking on the ducks. Um, so, that, when, when, they, when they say they can't treat her, it's like, well, what do you do? Well, what's so, the did they start out with, like, z -pan yeah, for they, her? Yeah, they, start, they went, like, from the second to the lowest to the... This didn't work, this didn't work, this didn't work, this didn't work, this didn't work. And then they're like, well, this is the last straw. Well, every time they say this is the last straw, it always works until this week. Yeah. And now they're like, uh-oh. <laughs> but another thing that they didn't point out, they said this is the first time it's ever happened in the United States. Well, where else did it happen? Did it happen in Russia? And they're like, oh, well, you, you're screwed now. You're in the concentration camp. <laughs> you know, and, and again, I'm sorry to pick on Russia, Okay. Uh, remind me about Russia and going back to um, our movie at the end. I'm writing it down. Is our, is our movie a big hit in Russia? No, 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 it's banned in Russia. It is? Yeah. Our movie is banned in Russia. Oh, wow. Let me finish this thought. That's exciting. And then I, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you why in a second. Um, we'll finish the thought about the antibiotics. But so it says the first time it's ever happened in America. Well, a good reporter would say... Well, what do you mean it's the first time it ever happened re in America? Oh, well, it's happened a thousand times in Nigeria, or it's happened a thousand times in Russia. Well, what happened there? N there are no other details. You know what I mean? The, the article's two, two, uh, two paragraphs long, and they're like, oh, well, you clicked on. You got the basic information that we're all screwed. We'll see you later. So um, we're going to move away from science for a second. Me and you and Joe and all our friends a uh, year and a half ago did Beacon of, uh, we did uh, Blasphemers, the soccer movie, right? It took me about four to six months to edit it, and then for a year it was on BlasphemersTheMovie.com, right? Well, Jeanette told me that we had to pay for Bla another year of Blasphemers starting January 1st, right? And I said, you know what? 
nobody's watching it, are there? And she's like, well, nobody's a relative to her. <laughs> and so I said, listen, we're, we're going to take it down. We're going to put it on YouTube. The whole reason we didn't put it on YouTube to begin with is because we have 20 songs on it as a soundtrack, right? And I've told this story on the air before. When Clerks was made, it cost them like 25 grand to make, and then it cost them like 60 grand for rights to music, which I believe the Weinstein company um, paid for, right? There's no way I could have made a movie and paid another fifty, sixty thousand dollars for music. Okay, it, it just w wasn't happening. So I put on my own website, and nobody watched it. So now I put it on YouTube, right? And was Jeanette, the only one who was able to tell how many people watched it. Yes. You, were, you weren't able to. No, I was not. And she never, she she never, never told gave you. me a number. No. So, which was probably a very low number. But so there were 20 songs on, in the movie, right? Out of the 20 songs, as soon as I uploaded it to YouTube, right? Um, it said that I violated 10 copyrights, Okay. Now, as soon as you uploaded it. Literally, as soon as I uploaded, like, red flag, red flag, red flag, red flag. You know, and I knew that's what was going to happen. That's why I didn't do it, okay? But my hands were kind of tied. I'm like, well, what's YouTube going to do? Are they going to come to my house and kick me in the balls? You know, that, that <laughs> life has already done that to me, okay? So 10 of the, 10 of the songs, nobody filed. Like, there, there's a local band called uh, Mr. Gnome. And I used uh, their song, Cleveland Polka. And it's literally the theme song of the movie. That didn't come up as a copyright restriction. And I'm like, well, I don't know if it was because they're a local band, if they don't have good management, if they're like, oh, no, we don't care who uses our music. Go ahead. You know what I mean? I don't know what the restrictions are. I don't that's, know how... That's not the song that opens the movie, is it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it is? Okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, you mean the very beginning? Yeah. No, that one got a copyright. Okay. The, I feel fantastic. That got a copyright. But they, out of the 20 songs, 10 of them gave me red flags, right? So now we're down to 10 red flags. And I'm like, okay, well, who cares? On the 10 red flags, and it, this is a funny story. Out of the 10 red flags, seven of them, including the one I feel fantastic at the beginning, right? They said, listen. You cannot monetize your video, meaning we cannot make money on the movie, which I knew, right? But if nobody's watching the movie, they don't care. If they watch it, hey, I just heard a new song. Maybe I'll check it out. They are cool with it under fair use laws, okay? Now, we are down to three songs, okay? There are three songs that I used. One of the three songs... One of them was by The Roots, and are you familiar with The Roots? They're the house band of Jimmy Fallon. Okay. I... Okay. The song that I used in the movie, okay, they said, I can use their song, but we cannot watch the movie. People in Germany cannot watch the movie. And I said, okay, well, I, I want that Roots song, so I permit my, my movie not to be shown in Germany. Right? Okay, so 10 of the songs, nobody had a problem. Nobody had a problem with. Okay, then 10, somebody had a problem, but seven of them are, as long as you don't make money, you can keep the song. In right. There. So now we're down to three okay. songs. And the eighth one? The eighth one said, don't show it in Germany and you can use it. And it was a song okay. by The Roots. And I said, nobody in Germany was going to watch that movie anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a band in Germany. Well, uh, is that where they're from? No, <laughs> they're, why, they're Americans. Why? Why did they pick Germany? I literally have no idea whatsoever. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, okay, my my movie's not in Germany, so that's okay. So it's on YouTube. It's not in Germany. So I'm like, I don't care. I, I like the roots. I like the song. I like it in my movie. Then I go to the second song okay and i can't even describe who sings it it's the lead singer of rage against the machine and a rapper i think it's run the jewels and they are very militant you know like uh you know the americans getting stomped on right and their song 
is awesome, right? If, if I can't put the song in the movie, I'm going to cry, okay? Well, they sent me a notice that said, you can use our song, okay? But people in Russia, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Ukraine, Armenia, and Georgia, I think that's the, I think it was six countries, they can't watch it. And I said, well, I'm going to be pissed. I can't be in Russia because we talk about Russia every day. But until people in America watch it, I'm, I'll worry about Russia later. So I said, okay, I'm going to use that song, okay? We are down to one song, okay? And this is a song that really burned my ass, okay? When Jeffrey gets, Jeffrey, in the movie, Jeffrey hops off the bench, and a soccer ball comes and hits him in the head and knocks him out, and you remember that part yeah. of the movie where there's like little butterflies fluttering yeah. for 30 seconds. The name of that song is called Headbang Ya by Baby Metal. Okay? And it, the whole reason I wanted to do it is because when I first did it, when I first did the script, I wanted to do um, um, Jeffrey is Dreaming of Girls Dancing Around. Right? But as we ran out of people to be in our movie, that's not going to happen. Right? So I just did the butterflies. Hey, the butterflies are, you know, like the old Bugs Bunny cartoon. Hey, look, a Tweety Bird's going around my head, right? So. See, I'm going to have to watch it again just to, because I'm not, I don't remember what song well, was. But playing. that's okay. I'll, I'll tell you the rest of it. But Headbang Ya, right? They said you can use the song, okay? But then you can't watch it in Japan or the United States or in American territories, or in Canada. <laughs> Ted's shaking his head. So I'm like, so I would have them, and so at first, right, when I first did it, it said it was banned in 22 countries, right? And again, take out the one that was banned in Germany, that was kind of the root song, that was kind of a, a quirk. That would be a good advertisement for the movie. Oh, well, but that, that, that's where I'm going with this, right? Banned in 22 countries. Oh, yeah. So it was banned in 22 countries, and then I said, listen, it can still be banned in Germany. It can still be banned in Russia. I can't have it banned in America. It has to be shown in America. So I sent back YouTube. YouTube has an option. We'll re-edit your movie for you and just black out that, I think it was 34 seconds of that song. I said, okay, do that. Do that. Go ahead and blur it. Just, just the song. Yeah, just not the, the song. Video. Not the video. Okay. But there, so basically, in the middle of the movie, there's 34 seconds of silence. And I even put in the description, right? So now, instead of being banned in 22 countries, because when I'm telling the story, there's a few little countries that are outliers, like Crete or Cyprus or something, you know. But... um. So now instead of being banned in 22 countries, now the movie's only banned in nine countries. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But we still have a movie that's banned in nine countries. So that's what I put on the description. I said, this is Blasphemers. It'll probably be rated R for language. Banned in nine countries. Well, nobody knows, except for who's listening to webcast, why it's banned in nine countries. It's because, you know, I used um, the, the music. But, you know, they don't know that. That's not what I put in the YouTube description. So yeah, so it's on YouTube. Anybody can watch it. It's just type up Blasphemers the movie, Fred Hunt, and it'll come right up on YouTube and it'll probably have like eight views. <laughs> but so like I said, I tagged like 20 things like soccer movie, independent movie, soccer film, blah, 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 American football, you know. So I, I tried to get traffic to the thing. And again, it's a catch-22. If a million people watch it, technically... Like, uh, we'll go back to that band, Mr. Gnome in Cleveland, okay? They're a great band. But they would be like, you know what, we're, we're offended by your indoor soccer movie. Pull, pull our song or else we're going to sue you, right? And I'd be like, oh, well, now I'm screwed. You know, but if nobody watches it, there's no problem. As of today, there's no problems. You see what I'm saying? But that Mr. Gnome song, go out and buy it. It's called Cleveland Polka. It's awesome. And I even said... I even put on the description of the movie. If I didn't love every song in that movie, I wouldn't have used it. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, it's like Kevin Smith when he, um, I can't remember what movie he did, but he said he loved every, every song, 
But in later movies, he didn't even release soundtracks because he's like, well, you know, it's a process, blah, blah, blah. I did, he didn't say he didn't love every move, song in his movie, but he didn't say he did love every song in his movie. You know what I mean? No, I, I agree. I thought the songs that you picked were very good. Yeah, and I even said, if you watch the movie and you love the music, go buy it. Don't illegally download it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm already in enough trouble. <laughs> Um, so that reminds me, Alex Jones, do you actually listen to Alex Jones? No, we're talking about I, music. I don't know, you know, where he is on the radio. We have... And the only reason I know who he is is because of Joey G. Right. We had a guy that we used to work with, and he used to talk about Alex Jones like he was some sort of prophet. <laughs> would you say that's fair? Yes, I, I would say that's fair. And I can't listen to Alex Jones for too long because there's like too much too many holes in his stories. You see what I'm saying? He's a big conspiracy guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. And this is what now maybe I don't listen to enough Alex Jones, okay? So you can correct me. Okay? But my my opinion of Alex Jones is that there's people in the government who tried to hide stuff and it's a vast conspiracy on this, this and this. Yeah. Okay? Like I said, I never listened to him. The only thing, the only reason I know anything about him is because of... Right. My massive conspiracy is everybody is lazy. <laughs> okay? And the great American secret is that we are turning into, uh, you know, see no evil, speak no evil, just keep your head down and keep moving. <laughs> you know, there is no, there are no more grand conspiracies because there's too much money to make. If there is a grand conspiracy, let's say we'll take Iron Mountain. Say there is a grand conspiracy. Okay, when we started losing money hand over fist, and there was a real grand conspiracy, don't you think I would have quit, and then wrote a book about the grand conspiracy and made a ton of money? Mm-hmm. Oh no, they would have wiped you out. Uh, no, they, no, I don't think that would have happened. You know what I think would have happened? I think that if there was a grand conspiracy, that everybody would be too lazy to do it. Like, half the people there just show up, and, and again, I don't mean you, Ted. You know who I'm talking about. We won't name names. Half the people there don't care. Yeah, I think people are generally too self-centered to yeah. conspire. Yeah. And when they do conspire, they, they don't do it to, like, bring down the trade centers. They're like, well, how can I get, you know, the two weeks between Christmas and, <laughs> and Thanksgiving, or two weeks between uh, Christmas and New Year's off and make everybody else work? Yeah. You know, I mean, there's no grand conspiracies. I used to love Jesse Ventura until he said George Bush brought down the trade, ta- uh, trade, the World Trade Towers. I'm like, there's no way. Number one, I hear for ten years how George Bush is an idiot, and then jo- uh, Jesse Ventura is going to tell me that you know George Bush had a backpack, you know, <laughs> and he's running up putting explosives <laughs> in the World Trade Centers. I, I, I don't. I, I agree with the part that I think George Bush was too lazy. He'd be like, uh, trails on my Texas ranch aren't going to get built. You know, if I'm up at the trade center, is planting explosives up there. And if he actually told somebody to do it, I'm sure they'd be like, oh, yeah, I did that. And, uh, you know, it would come out in the wash. Now, Joey G would always say it's, it's all documented. Yeah. Yeah. I can make documents. I, I write <laughs> up documents every week. Hey, this, this is episode 24. So that's a document right there. Yeah, I got a document right here that says Beacon is feature number 24. <laughs> but um, episode number, uh, yeah, we're on episode 24. But back to Alex Jones. So Alex Jones, and again, I don't listen to Alex Jones to know, you know, maybe I'm mischaracterizing him. Maybe he agrees with me that most Americans are too lazy to conspire, right? Oh, no, those are the people in the government. No, I, most of those guys just want to go, hey, it's the weekend. We're going to leave on Thursday, and we'll be back, you know, the Wednesday after the weekend. You know, I'm going to hook up with my... Um, that's On the east side of Cleveland, there's a uh, representative, Steve LaTourette. Yeah. And they said he was the greatest guy. He did the best work for his district. He did a great job, right? And they, he's, he's not still a no. representative, is he? No, because... He was one of those guys, this is one of your biggest pet peeves, he was one of those guys who said, I was 24-7, yeah. represent my thing, right? See, I'm already getting mad. And then you found out the reason he was working 24-7 is he had his family in Lake County, or what's Menor? Is that Lake County? 
I think so. Yeah, he had his Cleveland family, and then he had a mistress and a new family in Washington, D.C. Oh, okay. So that's why he worked 24-7, because he wasn't out there trying to plan conspiracies. He was trying to keep his second family from his first family. And that's so, how I believe most of the guys... Now, I'm Steve LaTourette, by all rights, did his job well. Okay? But when he comes out in interviews and says, Oh, when I was in Congress, I was working 24-7. You were working 24-7 to keep your second family from finding out about <laughs> your first family. You weren't conspiring anything. So technically, he wasn't lying. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, he didn't say what he was yeah, doing. The, the lie detector said that he was telling the God's honest truth. He was working 24-7. He was just, you have to define what you mean by work. And, you know, we were talking about, you know, with my mistress, I was talking about Washington work. And with my Cleveland family that I didn't see very often, I did talk about Cleveland work. But I didn't get back there so often because I was so busy in Washington. I don't think I ever heard about that. Oh, yeah. It was, it was real big about 10, 15 years ago. So but is, again, that, is that what drove him out of... Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, because everybody said how great he was and what a good Christian he was and... You know, how he was doing the Lord's work in, in mm. Congress, blah, blah, blah. Well, you don't understand. It's lonely when you're in Washington, <laughs> D.C. doing the Lord's work. Yes, yes. But in Steve LaTourette's defense, a lot of people are like that. It's opportunity. You know what I mean? You know, Jesse Jackson did that. Um, Martin yeah. Luther King. I mean, you name all the people who cite great... You know, uh, Jim Baker. Oh, you know, I, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. And, you know, next thing you know, he's got a whole closet, you know... So maybe a lot of the people who are faithful just don't have any opportunities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're not mean anybody, you know, when you're when you're in the house or you're when you're not in demand. I, yeah, I think of my neighbor down the street, Mister Grabowski. When I was growing up, he was the nicest guy in the world, but he did work from home <laughs> stuff. Mister Grabowski. <laughs> no, not Grabowski. Mister Grabowski. He was the nicest guy in the world, and he always worked. Right. Well, as far as I know, he never cheated on his wife. But he was home all the time, and I never seen him go anywhere. You know what I mean? He he did work from home, but it was like they would give him like a, a thousand pieces of metal on Monday. And they said, by Friday, you have to have these thousand pieces of metal, you know, sorted out. And just, you pick them up Monday, you bring them back Friday. Yeah. And he basically worked from home. Well, he's in his home whittling away, and if he doesn't get those thousand pieces, he doesn't get paid. Well, he's not meeting literally anybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, for all I know, maybe he stayed at home and watched porn, okay? But he didn't have the opportunity to cheat. He didn't go anywhere. You know, I always went over there, and there he was. He's he's chipping away at these little pieces of metal. All, every, every time I would go over there when I was a kid, he's chipping at the, hey, Fred, how you doing? Hey, Mr. Grabowski, how you doing? You never saw him anywhere. And they're like, oh, we need a school volunteer. And he's like, I volunteer. I don't see anybody all day. I wonder what kind of money he made. Doing I don't know. He must have made decent money, though. Because, you know, he stayed with that job for years and years. Did you look into that job? <laughs> I, I should be looking at it. Um, but let me go back to Alex Jones. We were, start, we were talking about music and Alex Jones. Alex Jones this week had Billy Corrigan on. Do you know who Billy Corrigan Smashing is? Smashing Pumpkins, right? Smashing Pumpkins, yeah. They said... That of all the mu a lot of the musicians go out from the '90s, Soundgarden, Rage Against Machine, Pearl Jam, they all go out and they raise awareness to their left wing causes. I think you kind of know that a lot of bands are like that. Even Bruce Springsteen does that. Didn't he go out last election cycle? Yeah, I know that he's you know he's kind of involved. Yeah. You know. So. Billy Corgan, I guess, is a huge conservative, and he went on Alex Jones, and I again, I think I read it on The Blaze, and he was talking about how America needs to wake up, and the right wing is the right wing, right? The, the, the correct wing. Yeah, the correct wing. Right wing is the correct wing. And so I'm like, oh, okay, well, I didn't know that about Billy Corgan. I, and again, it doesn't matter one way or the other. But if you're going to go out and promote conservative causes, I don't know if I would go on Alex Jones. Again, you think you might go on, I don't know, somewhere a little more moderate like Glenn Beck. You wouldn't, you wouldn't go to the most extreme right-wing talk show, right? Mm -hmm. 
And so they're like, oh, he's out there talking about conservatism. And I'm like, wow, that, that is not what I thought. Because in my head, you automatically just assume they're all like Pearl Jam. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, we're going to raise money for Hillary Clinton, or we're going to raise money for yeah, Bernie Sanders. Yeah, you assume they're all left wing. Yeah. And so even though the article literally was, and, and again, it wasn't a five-page article. It was two paragraphs. I, like, reread the article, like, three times. I'm like, Billy Corrigan? The one who wrote, you know, Tonight, Tonight, you know, or Bullet with Butterfly Wings. I'm like, I don't, I'm not getting that vibe. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, and I, I want to go back and say, you know, uh, kids, reinvest your money in 401ks or, you know, stuff like that. I, I, I wasn't getting that message in the music. That's like a Scott Bayo is a Trump supporter. Really? Yeah. Well, Scott Bayo's days have long passed. Yeah. Well, people can say Billy Corgan's days are so past, but, I mean, you, you hear about all those guys raising money. It seems like not a day goes by without somebody raising money for, I think I read this week, the Red Hot Chili Peppers were raising money for Bernie Sanders. <laughs> so, you know, give me one second, I'm going to cover the mic. Alex, can you come here? I just didn't want to scream in the mic. I'm sure they heard it. And now the... The phone's ringing. He, he doesn't mean Alex Jones either. No, no, no. Alex, my, my son. See if that's mom on the phone and then check on the ducks. Run, run, run. Run, run. See, we have wired microphones. No. So that's my fault. If I had a wireless microphone, I could walk around in a circle and talk about Alex Jones. Oh, uh, did you answer it? No. Hello? No, I don't know who that is. Just open the, listen, the sun is the sun is down, so open the wood door and just tell me if you see the ducks. Yeah, I see them. They're sleeping. Okay, that's good. They'll be, that means they'll be easy to catch if we have sleeping ducks. My <laughs> wife came home about a month ago, Ted, and said, hey, we have ducks. Yeah, I remember. It was right after I was here the last time. Yeah. So, but it looks like, and again, we'll talk about this off the record, right? But maybe next Friday, if you don't mind coming back, we'll do it Friday, and then we can sort out where we're going. But um, so anyhow, talking about uh, Billy Corrigan, the reason I brought it up is because I was just stunned. And do you, when you hear about the people who are conservatives, it's almost like, oh, really? Like, who is that big conservative who was in uh, the, the Roger and, no, he wasn't in Roger and me. Um, Charlton Heston. He was in one of those uh, documentaries. They made him look bad. And they're like, oh, he talked about what a great conservative he was. And, and it wasn't that I cared one way or the other. It was just they make it sound like it's so out of the ordinary to yeah. be a conservative. But, man, I, I don't know. I don't know if I'd go on to Alex Jones. <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe I'd start slower, like Dennis Prager. Yeah, he seems like a more... Uh... Look at all the red. Yeah, I think I've been yelling too much, so I apologize, Ted. It's probably because I haven't been... You know, I'm like uh, Mr. Grabowski. Somebody comes over, I'm like, hey, how are you doing? <laughs> Somebody came and see me. Um, uh, another thing I was reading about, and I, I'm redefining... I'm redoing... I'm doing a Beacon of Speech website. And so I'm starting the blog, I'm starting everything. So we've been doing it, but we haven't really been promoting it. We've been saying listen, but we've been saying like listen into the air. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so in the last month, I didn't want to scream about Iron Mountain for, that's my fault. So I apologize, that's not your fault. But I, I, for an hour and a half, I didn't want to scream about Iron Mountain or take it that way. Right, so I built the website, I want to have that connected. And one of the things I started to do was start blogging. Okay, it's like, oh, well, great, you're going to blog. Uh, welcome to 2004. You know what I mean? But it's just something else I wanted to tie into Beacon of Speech. And one of the things I was reading about was the Ramones, right? And that's where I was going with Billy Corgan. They said that the guitarist of the Ramones was also a huge conservative. Yeah. And when he was inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, he thanked George Bush. And also, um, who was the singer? Joey Ramone. Joey Ramone, I think, wrote a song about 
Maria Bartiromo? Yes. You you know that, right? Yes. And she was, what was she on, CNBC or something like that? No, I don't know if that makes you a conservative, but... Well, they said Joey wasn't. They said he was more to the left wing. But, and then they said Dee Dee wasn't left wing or right wing. He was just a junkie. Yeah. You know, he's, <laughs> he, he was apolitical. And then the drummer was kind of the peacemaker. And he goes, well, you know, the Ramones was not about politics. It was all about, you know, one, two, three, four, da, da, da. It's <laughs> all about punk rock. You know what I mean? So, and again, the, the thing that, that I loved about the Ramones, I put in the blog, I shouldn't say I love this about them. They're all dead. That makes me sad, right? But that they blaze their own trail, right? But so I'm reading this super long article about the Ramones, and three quarters of the article I already, I already knew. They, they're, I think Joey wrote a book before, before he died. I think Marky wrote a book. I think the original drummer wrote a book. I mean, uh, I think Rolling Stones done, has done a, literally 100 stories about the Ramones. It's not plow, plowing new ground, mm -hmm. right? But they had one of the greatest quotes I ever heard, right? The drummer is talking about Phil Spector. Okay. Oh, no, no, it wasn't the, the, the drummer, it was the guitarist. And he was talking about Phil Spector. And the famous story is he waved the gun around at the Ramones to make them, you know, do better. You know, play, play that D chord again, play that D chord again, play that D chord again. And he started waving his gun around, right? Now, th this is one of the funniest things, and, and again, I lifted it straight from Rolling Stone. Um, the guitarist said, decades later, Spectre was convicted of second-degree murder for the 2003 shooting of Lana Clarkson and is serving a 19-year-to-life sentence in California. In Commando, Johnny Ramone wrote, after he shot that girl, I thought, I'm surprised he didn't shoot at someone every single year, <laughs> which is such a great line. Because, you know, everybody's always like, I'm surprised. He died so young. He, I was so shocked that that happened. Johnny Ramone was not surprised at all. And it's funny that he put in his, and again, they all wrote autobiographies. He, he, was, he, was, he was surprised he didn't shoot more people. Mm -hmm. You don't get that kind of candor from anybody. And that's why I love the Ramones right there. Well, I remember uh, reading that John Lennon said that Phil Spector pulled a gun out and shot it into the ceiling yeah. in the studio with him. Yeah. And John Lennon said, Phil, if you're going to shoot me, shoot me, but, you know, I need my ears. <laughs> you know what? And I've been noticing my ears have been doing a little bit better since I left Iron Mountain under uh, unfavorable terms. <laughs> so, um... But that was another thing. We always do song of the day. Our song of the day is uh, Knock Me Down by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Um, while we were gone on our little hiatus there, I'm, I'm reading about the Ramones, and they're all, they're all dead. And, you know, David Bowie's died. Who's that guy you like from the Eagles who died? Oh, Glenn Frey. Glenn Frey. Um, the guy from Motorhead died. It seems like all these icons are dying, Right. And I love the Chili Peppers. There's a lot of people out there who love the Chili Peppers. Prince. Prince. Prince, Prince I'm sorry, Prince fans. Prince just died. Um, Madonna did a tribute that pissed a lot of people off. I thought you were going to say Madonna died. Uh, no, well, <laughs> no comment. <laughs> but, you know, she's the last person who should be doing a Prince, Prince uh, memorial. Um, but I digress. Anthony Kiedis, the lead singer of the Chili Peppers, he canceled a show at the last minute. And they said it was indiscriminate stomach pain, right? And away he went. And it's like, oh, my God, it, it's the Prince thing all over again. He, he's literally going to die. And I really think people thought he was going to die. Because I think a lot of people loved the Chili Peppers like I did. Yeah. So after that happened, I went back. And I didn't listen. I know this is stupid. And I know we've talked about this a little bit, I think, off the air. I loved... The punk rock Red Hot Chili Peppers. I got their second album, third album. Mother's Milk is probably one of my five favorite albums of all time. Blood Sugar Sex Magic came out. That's the album everybody knows. 
They did Under the Bridge. That's the one with Under the Bridge. With Under the Bridge. Under the Bridge came out, and I'm like, you know what? I don't love the Red Hot Chili Peppers anymore. I just don't. They're just not punk anymore. And don't get me wrong. They're a good rock band. They have some good rock singles. But I have not bought a Chili Peppers album since Blood Sugar Sex Magic because that's when they changed. Now, everybody grows. Everybody changes. Okay, that's me. Okay, and I still like the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Okay? But I went back, and after Anthony went to the hospital, I listened to Uplift Mo- Mofo Party Play, and I'm like, this every was, song this was is recent, great. right? Oh, yeah. Well, and that's where I'm going with it. So Anthony's in the hospital for, like, uh, Anthony Kiedis is in the hospital for, like, two days. He gets out, and it really was, like, he doesn't have to tell you because of HIPAA, but he goes, no, it really was a stomach problem. It, I don't know if it was... Now, he doesn't say exactly what it was, but it was like pancreatitis or gallbladder attack or something yeah. in the digestive system. Put, for all I know, it was kidney stones, right? But something put him in the hospital for two days. And he's like, oh, no, it must have been a slow news day. You know, the doctors took care of it, and I'm good to go. You know, we're, we're back on tour. We're ready to go. You know, and like, uh, you know, I love Cliff, you know, from the movie, but he had his gallbladder out, Right. And for about two weeks, he was out of commission. And then, you know, two weeks later, he's back at work. He's like, hey, uh, you know, he's not the lead singer of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. So nobody nobody cared about Cliff except for me and his wife and a couple other people. (laughs) You know what I mean? So I think it was something similar with Anthony. But I think everybody was freaked out by all these rock stars dying. They Rolling Stone interviewed... Anthony, after he got out of the hospital, he goes, it must have been a slow news day because people from around the world are like, get better, get better. He's like, I'm not dying. I'm not going anywhere. He's like, I'm not doing heroin. He's like, I don't know why everybody's all freaked out for. <clears throat> now, they've been touring? They've been touring and they're releasing a new album in the fall. Now, is John Frusciante no, with them? No, he's done. He's done. He's, he's done. He's okay, though, right? Yes. Let me answer your question. So, back in the 90s, my favorite song was Knock Me Down from uh, Mother's Milk for a short time. Just, it's a great song. And I don't even think he remembered writing it because he was so whacked out on heroin. Okay? Was Anthony Kiedis. Okay. Right? But that's how I feel. That's how I felt for the last month. I felt like I was knocked down. I'm ready to get back up. I'm ready to get cracking. We're going to have a new website. We're going to do... Bigger, better things, right? So Anthony didn't die. He's alive. So our song of the day is Knock Me Down by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Go download it. And if the first song you ever heard by the Red Hot Chili Peppers is Under the Bridge, like you didn't know they even had a song before that, go back and listen to their first three or four albums of just punk, straight-out punk classics. Now, you knew that they existed, but you weren't. You were not... I saw the Chili Peppers in 1989. I saw them at the Fantasy Theater. Did you ever go to Fantasy Theater? Where was that? It was in Lakewood. It was on Detroit Road, right on the line between Cleveland and Lakewood. And it was an old movie theater with, like, all the seats tore out. And I, it was... I've heard of it, but I... I it was I've literally a, a crap hole. <laughs> and that was in the 80s. I think it's still open today. Yeah, there's my dog protecting the backyard from birds. Isn't he helpful? <laughs> but um, anyhow, so I saw the Chili Peppers in '89, and they, they were, they were horrible. Okay, and I again, I think I told the story, but Chad Smith, Anthony Kiedis, and uh, Flea, they were all like 27 years years old, and Hill had just died. So they had 19-year-old John Frusciante <laughs> playing this show back in 89, and they're yelling at him. They even stopped the concert a couple of times to yell at John Frusciante. <laughs> they had a guitar tech come out in the middle. He's playing with John's guitar. So I'm going to turn this back around. So that's 1989, right? John Frusciante basically almost died, what was it, 8, 10 years ago from heroin. He was, you know, the ghost. That That's not... I'm not giving any secrets away. That that was a documentary. And um, my the, finger really hurts. One second. Yes, Alex, are you okay? Go put some ice yeah, on it. My finger just really hurts, Anna. 
Tether t- chase him into the backyard. Okay. And my bike's in the backyard. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Uh, did you catch that? Uh, Alex's finger hurts. And his bike is in the backyard. And where are the ducks? Um, next to the pool. Next to the pool, okay. So anyhow, the last album that John Frusciante did... After he got off of heroin, he was like, all I want to do is make music. I love music. And he put out 10, I think he put out like, he was putting out a guitar album every six months. And all they were were guitar albums like Joe Satriani, okay? Because mm-hmm. you're the classic rock guy. And I think as many people were buying the John Frusciante solo albums, I was listening to Beacon of Speech. <laughs> but that's all he wanted to do is play the guitar. I love the guitar. You got to love it. He said, I have enough money. I don't want to be in the Chili Peppers. I love you guys, but I'm done with the Chili Peppers. So they brought in some guy who played, you know, with John Frusciante's solo albums. And then he joined the Chili Peppers. And John Frusciante said, I got enough money. I'm just going to play guitar. So as far as I know, he's doing what he loves. Yeah. Now, if he is telling the truth... That is, number one, it's admirable, and it's number two, it's nice to do, you know what, I don't need to do chili peppers, I'm going to do what I love, right? But, if it's your excuse just to do heroin and go die alone, it's sad, you know what I mean? Well, if he was here, you could see him, and you would know whether he's telling the truth or telling a lie. Mm-hmm. And the whole reason you bring it up, I'm not calling John Frashani a liar, I'm just saying, and me and you talked about this when Prince died. When all these musicians, you don't know if they're telling the truth. Yeah. And I think Anthony got sucked into that. He's like, no, pancreatitis. You know, and I don't know his pancreatitis. But he's like, I'm fine. You know, why are you guys all freaking out for? Yeah. <laughs> well, we're all freaking out because all these other musicians have died in the last year. Can I just, like, move the fish in it all just see if it's alive? Yes, yes, go okay. ahead. It looks alive, but I'm not sure. See, this is the uh, the uh, thing I was telling you about, about uh, getting our own space. <laughs> okay, it's alive. Okay, Alex was testing to make sure one of our fish was um, alive or dead. So, he's very helpful. So, talking about wasted lives, that takes us to our last topic. Now, I'm being 100% honest here, and me and you have talked about this on one of our other webcasts. Let's say you win the lottery tomorrow, and you have FU money, right? Yes. What is Mount Everest on your list of things to do? Are you, are you, you going to be like, I'm going to start training for Mount, Mount, Mount Everest? No. <laughs> no. Because if, if I won a lot of money, I do not want to do something that's going to put my life in danger. All right. Would you want to go to Japan and climb up Mount Kilimanjaro? No. Do you want to go to Colorado and climb Pikes Peak? You know, I might want to go out west, but I don't want to climb things. <laughs> if you I'm go- content to just look at mountains. Okay, but if you, had that, if you had that money, you do have dreams that you have. You would like to travel. Yeah. You'd like to go out west. And let, let's just say you don't want to climb anything. And say you won, let's just say $100 million. You could buy your own island like Johnny Depp, and you could lay out there in the sand. Oh, 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 oh. Is your finger okay, Alex? Yeah, I just put it yeah. on. Okay. So you would have $100 million, and you wouldn't want to climb anything. You'd want to be sipping Coronas on your own island. Would you, would you say that? Yeah, because imagine like winning $100 million, and you start doing that stuff, and you like fall and die. Right. You know? Well, that's, that's where I'm going. Something else I read on CNN, okay? There is this... Tw- this week, four people died on Mount Everest in the last seven days. And I know you've heard about this because I've heard it on the radio, too. Okay? Four people died, some experienced, not, some not so experienced. Okay? Or you're, you're sitting on Mount Everest, freezing to death. And right. right before you slip away, you think, I have $100 million. <laughs> Yes. And that's where I'm going with it. So one of the one of the guys who died, he he you know, he was a climber and they're like, Oh, you know, he was an experienced climber, he had bad luck, blah blah blah. 
But one of the people who died was a 28-year-old girl. And let me see if I wrote down her name on the thing. Blah, blah, blah. No, it just says, here was the article that I took this from. It was, a life wasted. Mother of Mount Everest victim wants answers. Okay? Now, the girl who died was a 28-year-old blonde girl. Good looking. 28-year-old blonde girl. Her boyfriend... Her and her boyfriend made a pact that they were both vegans, okay? And they wanted to prove that vegans could do anything that anybody else did. So they wanted to climb the highest peak on all seven continents. And Mount Everest was the last one, right? Now, this just hatched all kinds of questions in my head for you, Ted, okay? <laughs> Number one, let's say you're a vegan, which you're not. No. Okay. How much do you care about promoting veganism to other people? Um, if, if I was a vegan? Yeah. What worried. would you do to make other people to be vegans to raise awareness? Probably nothing. <laughs> and when I'm reading this, that's all I could think of. You can be a vegan, okay? If you're promoting veganism... Well, you died for your cause. Good for you. You're yeah. a martyr of the vegan religion. Okay? But she was very vehement that her and her boyfriend wanted to show vegans could do anything other people can do. Yeah, but well, most other people don't do that. Right. And the other thing is, and I'm going to be honest with you. Try and be honest with me. Okay? Have you ever thought, you know what? That girl over there, she's a vegan. I bet you she can't climb a mountain. <laughs> No. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't make any sense. No, it, that thought never crossed my mind. Like, you are doing this to prove that you, that vegans can do anything? I never thought that vegans couldn't do anything. That's like saying, I climbed Mount Everest for left-handed yeah. awareness. I'm <laughs> left-handed. People all my whole life, they said, you're left-handed, you can't climb Mount Everest. It's like, okay, well, good for you. So so this 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 girl, and it, and again, you can al you can al already see my angle, right? In order, yeah. For see, I, I never. This, there's times where I've thought of becoming a vegetarian or a vegan, right? But the thing that stopped me wasn't, yeah. But if I do that, I'm not going to be able to climb Mount Everest. Yeah, you know. Yeah, uh, you know what stops you? It's what stops you is you're like, wow, that bacon is yummy, <laughs> or wow, I like hamburgers. What stops me is having the willpower. <laughs> yeah. Because my sister's a vet, Jeanette. She's a vegetarian, the producer, or yeah, producer of the movie there. And um, so she's a vegetarian. She has never told me, "Hey, I want to be a vegetarian so I can, you know, do no." Because her friends were vegetarians, and they're like, "Listen, do you realize that they kill the cows and the chickens in factories?" And my sister's like, "Oh my god!" What's well, like? Well, would you? How do you think that the cow like? What? I honestly think in her mind, she thought they, like, died of old age, and then they made hamburgers <laughs> out of them. And then she's, she's like, oh, they killed them in the factory? That's horrible. And they, they were still so young, and then they were hamburgers. Now, I'll admit, when I think about that, I do, I do feel bad, and I do consider yeah. becoming. I haven't done it yet, but. Yeah. Whereas my dad's on the other end of the spectrum. My dad, you know, I, he, he's eating things, it's like. Oh, have you ever eaten shark? I'm like, no, I haven't. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've eaten shark. Oh, have, well, you ever, have you ever eaten unicorn? Yeah, <laughs> have you ever? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so, so back to this, this girl climbing Mount Everest. Okay, now go back to when you were 27, 28 years old. Did you have the money to take two weeks off? No. To climb Mount Everest, okay? So all these things in my head, none of this is making any... And I don't think I could have taken two weeks off. <laughs> and that's the whole thing. You know, she, her mother is like, her mother is mad. She wants answers. Well, the time for answers is probably when she was going up, you know, in every continent. What's the tallest mountain in North America? That's Mount McKinley, right, in Alaska? Yeah, I think so. That's not true. They renamed it. It's not Mount McKinley anymore. What's the Indian name? They, uh, Obama signed something a couple months ago. It said it's not Mount McKinley. It's uh, if we had a computer that we weren't using the webcast <laughs> on, we could look it up. But whatever it is, you know the or time. If he, or if either of us had a smartphone. Yeah, the 
the time for the mom to be worried about this was when she was going up Mount McKinley, not when she's doing Everest. Okay? Who does she want answers from? I don't know, because <laughs> she goes, I'm following... And when, when, when they're interviewing the mom, she's like, yeah, I'm following my daughter. And it's like, ping, ping, ping. I know my daughter reached the top, and then she's on her way down, and then she died. And then they said it was altitude sickness, and now I want answers. Well, guess what? Your daughter went up Mount Everest, yeah. and she died. Like, they said the mortality rate on Mount Everest is still something like 10% in history. You know what I mean? And it's like, you want answers? Your daughter went on Mount Everest and she died. Of, of, uh, and she's like, well, her boyfriend has still got altitude sickness. He's still in the hospital. He hasn't given her any answers. Here's oh, the answer. He, he survived? He survived. He, here's your answer. She went on Mount Everest and she died. There's your answer. I want answers. And I don't, and I don't mean to taunt the, the poor mom. You know what I mean? Because, you know, I, I would, if that happened to my kids that I love very much, you know, I would want answers too but well, what answers do you want you know what i mean she you know wouldn't it be funny if she owned like the copyrights to one of those songs <laughs> yeah, <her> movie, <laughs> and she heard this she's like you're not getting the, <laughs> that's it you're you're not getting your movie played in the united states but it, it, it reminds me of my sister when she's like did you know they kill the cattle to make the hamburgers <laughs> And this lady, she's literally like, did, did you realize people die when you, they go up Mount Everest? It's like, you didn't do any homework whatsoever before your daughter went to Camp Man do? Oh, man. And it's, and the, so in the last week, it was, it was. Yeah, two, I mean, it's not like she walked to the store to get a loaf of bread and died. Yeah, you know, she's a good looking 28 year old. Let's, let's just play this out. She's a good-looking 28-year-old, right? And she's in New York City. And she's found dead outside of her apartment. I want answers. Well, I dead, I understand. What happened? Big city. She could have been murdered. She could have had a heart attack. Uh, uh, she was on Mount Everest. I want answers. Uh, she, went on, <laughs> she went on goddamn Mount Everest. Right? And, uh, and I hate to pick on the lady, but uh, what did you expect? And in the same week, and again... You know, me and you talk about Amigos at work. The same week, there were four deaths on Mount Everest. Two experienced climbers, her daughter, and again, her daughter was an experienced climber, not like the top of the top end climber, but she was still a good climber. Her boyfriend was a really good climber, right? And then a Sherpa died. They said one of his footings gave way, and he, he collapsed into a crevice and died. Wow. A, what, 1,000-foot fall or 500-foot fall killed a Sherpa. Well, those Sherpas basically live on the mountain. There's no Sherpa mom going to CNN. I want to know what happened to, you know, Joe Sherpa. He was on Mount Everest and he fell off of, you know, the, the footing gave way. I swear I think that's the last thing I would do. Yeah. And so, you know, me and you talk about conspiracy theories. You know, that mom is like, I, what happened to my daughter? Okay, here's the conspiracy. She loved this guy so much that she went everywhere he went. And she probably didn't really want to go to Mount Everest, but she's like, I love him. And then she died because she's on Mount Everest. One in ten people die who go on to Mount Everest. It, it's the statistics. I'm not making this up. So, but then, but then again, I feel like the jerk. You know what I mean? And that's why I needed to calm down for like three weeks. You know what I mean? So I'm not like spouting off about Iron Man. You know what I mean? So now I'm spouting off about this poor uh, dead lady's mom. Yeah. But yeah, they, again, when I was a kid, and I want you to go back to when you were a kid, when you were 21 years old. Okay, 18 years old. You never had an inkling to climb Mount Everest. No. Take, away, take away money, take away skills, take away... When you dream, Dennis Leary, and we've talked about this on the webcast, Dennis Leary said my dream was to become center fielder, center fielder of the Boston Red Sox. By the time I was 20, I knew that wasn't going to happen. <laughs> right? And the same thing. Before you know the logistics to everything, it was never my dream to go to Mount Everest, ever. I, didn't, I never wanted to go to Nepal. I never wanted to go to, to anywhere over there. I never wanted to go to India. I kind of would like to go to maybe Great Britain or Canada. 
back to Canada, but I don't want to go to, I want to go anywhere exotic where, you know, you're going to get killed by, like, you you know, we're in the, the, the gypsy town. Right now, the thermometer says it's 83. We don't have the air conditioner on. We got a fan blowing on us when it's 83, right? Hey, Fred, didn't you ever want to do adventure and run with the bills and uh, bulls in Pamplona? <laughs> Pamplona. No. No, I didn't. Well, where's your sense of adventure? I was having lots of adventure in here at work and, you know, studying. Yeah, that makes me think of uh, city slickers. You know, running with the, the bulls. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have, I have no interest in doing any of that. And again, say you want to do one dangerous thing. Right? I just, I, I don't mean to oh, interrupt, no, but, but it made me think of that movie. Remember when, when, when uh, Billy Crystal got, got gored by, the, by one of the bulls in, yeah. in his ass? And he said, he said to the doctor who was sewing it up, he said, don't sew anything up that needs to stay open. <laughs> <laughs> so now before I forget because you threw me off with city slickers so there's no you have no when you were 20 you didn't have anything dangerous that you wanted to do um no I don't think so I did dangerous things but oh, yeah. not like I did stupid things too not premeditated I, I okay let's uh, let's uh, let's use this example um, I Ho did dangerous things with like no goal in mind. <laughs> in Ho in Hawaii, okay, or not in Hawaii. I'm sorry. In Washington, Mount St. Helens erupted 1980, 1982 ish, right? Yeah, yeah. And they said there was maybe a six hour window where they started to evacuate people, saying something's going on. We don't know what it is, but stay away from the mountain. A few people rushed up the mountain. <laughs> And they died in the mudslide. You know, they were campers, and they're like, oh, something's going on. Let's go see. <laughs> right? So not even like going to see a volcano or something. You, you see what I'm saying? You weren't like, oh, I want to go to Hawaii because, you know, that volcano's erupting or anything. No, you cannot go. Yes, you could go ahead and try. I was trying to keep the heat down. So, again, if the heat is on and... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm torturing poor Ted. No, it's not that bad. <laughs> what about you, Alex? Do you want to do anything dangerous when you grow up? Do you want to run with the bulls in Pamplona, Spain? Do you want to, do you want to ride on the space shuttle? Do you want to go up Mount Everest? See, Alex is still um, down on the concept of radio, too. You either have to say yes or no. People can't see you shrugging your shoulders. <laughs> I think he keeps shrugging his shoulders. I don't know. I think he wants to build an atom bomb. Do you want to do that? <laughs> oh, is that the Rubik's Cube again? Yeah, he's yeah. taking apart the Rubik's Cube. When you did it, when you took it apart last time, I couldn't get back together, so I had uh, Yeah, Alex has been taking a lot of stuff apart, which is fine, because if that's what he wants to do, that's what he wants to do. That's cool. And like I said, Alex, if you want to go to up Mount Everest, that's no. that's fine. There's a piece here. I just, no, if you go up no, Mount Everest, no, just know no, that no. one in ten people know. No, now no, you're no, no, I, Well, I don't want to talk you out of your dreams. Well, I, I never wanted to go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See, I don't want, I don't want to uh, uh, squash my son's spirit there. No. But, you know, on National Geographic, they talked about the guy going to the South Pole. You know what I mean? Uh, was it Sir Edmund Hillary went to the South Pole, right? Yeah. And they were like, oh, yeah, it was his dream to go to the South Pole since he was a kid. And I'm like, that's not what I dreamed. <laughs> I will admit that seems kind of interesting to me. Oh, yeah, I South agree Pole. with that. I still don't think I would do it, but... That at least has a little bit of draw. But you know me. what? I remember being Alex's age and wanting to go up to Minnesota where there was, you know, a lot of wind. And I, I lived in Minnesota for a couple of years, and I recommend Minnesota. If it wasn't for my wife hating Minnesota, we'd still be there. So. But I wouldn't have met handsome Ted. So. Now, do you know, do you know what year it was that uh, Edmund Hillary went there? Oh, 1908, if I had to guess. 
But again, that goes back to, you know, what was his day job? Was he doing that instead of fighting in uh, Uganda? You know what I mean? Because Sir Edmund Hillary, he was a British citizen, but it seemed like he was away from home for like 10 years. Like, did he want to go to the South Pole because he dreamed of it since he was eight? Or did the British say, well, we need somebody to volunteer, either go to Uganda or go to the South Pole? And he's like, I don't mind going to the South Pole. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or like, you know, he hated his wife. You know, all the stories about how Lincoln hated his wife. You know, did he hate his wife so much? He's like, literally, I want to be on the other side of the earth for like 10 years. Did, did Lincoln really hate his wife? Supposedly she was domineering and yelled at him all the time. And he, you know, he was just a henpecked husband. That's funny. Just think of that. You're the president of the United States. Yeah, you go your home. Wife is yelling at you. You, you sign the. This? Yes, you can. How do you make it? You, you sign. It? Yeah, you sign the Emancipation Emancipation Proclamation, one of the most important documents in history. And then you get home, and the wife's like, "You never come home. You're always doing crap. I don't know what you're doing." So I just cook it. Boy, yes. <laughs> Put in the microwave for two minutes. And the 30 seconds, but you got to put it this way, specifically like that. I'm watching Alex. My daughter set the microwave on fire one year, two, uh, two years ago, and she caught on fire. We had to th take it and throw it out in the snow. Okay, <laughs> go ahead and shut the door. Two minutes 30? Yes, two 30. You have to hit time cook. No, or that. Oh, good job, Alex. See, you're even better than Dad. Um, so anyhow, so Mary Todd is bitching at him when he gets home from work. Don't worry about those slaves. <laughs> worry about your wife. I was going to say, man, talk about somebody who just, like, got no respect. You free the slaves, save the union, and then somebody shoots you in the head. Yeah. And I never got the impression, and maybe I'm wrong, but I never got the impression. They said he was so, like, focused on keeping the union together that he wasn't, like, Friends. He and that like have a lot of friends, you know what I mean? Well he worked twenty four seven. Well I, well I think he's one of the few guys yeah. who probably did work twenty four seven. And then, you know, Mary Todd Lincoln's bitching at him for working twenty four seven. How come you're never home? Yeah. You left a candle burning, you can burn down our log you can burn down the White House. Yeah, I just imagine it, you know, he's going through all that and then he comes home and Getting yelled at for, like, something trivial. Yeah. And, you know, other people, you know, we, we were talking about, um, you know, Steve LaTourette, you know, um, you know, cheating on his wife and, you know, he had a second family in Washington, D.C., or the mistress and her, her thing. You know, I never got the impression from Lincoln that was, that was, like, going on. I got the impression he was henpecked and then he went to work to escape it and then... <laughs> And then, you know, the people at work hated him, too. Like, oh, geez, there's that <laughs> honest Abe, that jerk. Ooh, the union. Eh, we got to preserve the union. That guy was probably getting it from both ends, too. I don't know a lot about him, but it just doesn't seem like he had a very good life. No. No. You know, there's a, there's a few people. Like, um, when I was younger, and I brought him up before, Martin Luther King. You know, I always got the impression that he really got a raw deal all the way around, right? And he had, like, no joy in his life. And I always felt bad for Martin Luther King. But then, like, in the last five or ten years, and I find out that he had, you know, a mistress on every stop. <laughs> you know, Mobile, there was a mistress. And, you know, Baton Rouge. Or, and then, I, I don't get me wrong, I still felt bad for him, okay? But I'm like, well, at least he had some joy in his life you know what i mean you know i my daughter makes fun of me that I'm, i've been listening to a lot of john coltrane and miles davis and what do i do next oh um hand it to me and go get a bowl from up there you might not be able to reach it no use my magical reading. alex is gonna yeah use your magical leaping abilities and get a bowl from up there wait which one anyone just see that big white bowl yeah. there's three bowls inside that bowl so anyhow, I got the impression that Martin Luther King was at least having a little bit of fun on the side. You know what I mean? He was at least getting down and having some joy in his life. 
I didn't get that impression with Lincoln. You know what kind of surprised me about Martin Luther King? He was pretty short, wasn't he? Uh, that I don't know. I I thought, it, now, you. I could be wrong. I'll take the next bowl, Alex. I thought he was average size, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe he wasn't. Hey, before you put that back up, get, get a white bowl. Take that white bowl and hand it to me, the little one. No, I think that one needs that. <laughs> Take that, and that's not enough, so I need a little white bowl to put the rest no, of it in. No, I'll just wait a bit. Well, yeah, but it's burning my hands. Put that <laughs> in the little white bowl. Just Alex is having me hold it. I'm going to burn my hands. <laughs> just put it in the little white bowl. Now, this is great radio. This is what I'm going to send to WNIR is my, uh, my application. I'm sure they'll be very impressed. <laughs> yeah, he could talk about Martin Luther King and be blasphemous and uh, to help his son make popcorn. So, I don't know. Maybe he wasn't short. I, I just saw a picture of him standing with a bunch of other people, uh -huh. and he was like, one of the shortest people. The only person, maybe he was standing with a bunch of tall people. I don't the know. the only person that I have read about that has been short. Maybe like, he was standing with a basketball team. <laughs> well, no, no, that's the thing. Is um, in the last month I read about someone being short, and I was like, I knew they were short, but I didn't know they were that short. Prince. They yeah. said Prince was five foot one, and he played basketball. And they I said, didn't know he was that short. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know he was that short either. And they said that he was the hardest working player, and if he was five, six inches taller, he could have played college football. Or not football, college no. basketball. But on the high school, he was on one of the best teams. He was Mr. Hustle. He distributed the ball. And then they said when he was famous, he could play basketball with whoever, you know, because he's Prince. And Magic Johnson was telling the story that when he played against Prince, he was one of the only people who ever trash-talked him. Magic Johnson said that about Prince. And Prince tra trash talk Magic, Magic Johnson. Johnson. Yeah. And Magic Johnson thought it was funny because even though he's the great facilitator, Magic Johnson's like 6'5". You know what I mean? Yeah. So he thought it was funny. He goes, I thought it was funny. This little guy, he's playing as hard as he can. He's playing. He's talking trash. I'm like, you are five foot effing one. <laughs> did, he say, did he say how he did against him? Oh, he said he played hard, but he kept saying Prince played good, he played hard. But he goes, he never played college ball, you know, yeah. as a musician. He played ball with his musician friends, and he'd always beat the crap out of them. Well, you know, you're, you're playing the, uh, you know, keyboardist of the revolution. <laughs> you're going to beat the keyboardist of the revolution. He, he's a keyboardist. He don't play basketball. <laughs> he wasn't on the state championship team like Prince was. I don't have it in front of me, but I think somebody on Prince's high school team went on to the NBA, but I can't remember. It was like some role player. His his Prince's high school team oh, was... Oh, so he wasn't a big name in the NBA? No, was a, but his, his high school team was a powerhouse, and they won the state championship in, in Minnesota. And again, they said he was like the sixth best player. He was the first guy off the bench. But again, you can't... Ted, me and you talk about basketball all the time. You can't get past that he's five foot one, yeah. even in high school. You can't, you know, you can't fix that. <laughs> yeah. Because there was a lot of people who said that Prince loved basketball. He loved playing. He loved talking trash. He loved, you know, you know, he followed basketball, and that's fine. Uh, that's great. You know, um, on uh, Uplift Mofo Party Plan. There's a song about how much Anthony Kiedis loved the L.A. Lakers, right? So, you know, musicians love basketball. That's all there is to it. I think maybe Eddie Vedder does too, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, I don't know if he does anymore because he loved the Supersonics, and they moved to Oklahoma City. So I don't know if he still loves them or, you know. But our time is about up, Ted. Ted, I thank you enough for... I, I can't thank you enough for coming over <laughs> and sitting in the sweat box. Like I said, it's like Cool Hand Luke. You know what I mean? Me and you are in the <laughs> no, sweat it's box. It's not that bad. Yeah, it, it is. So <laughs> I, I appreciate it. I already I'm, looked I'm at the, probably delirious from dehydration. <laughs> I already looked at the long-term forecast. If you come back next Friday... It'll be even hotter. No, no, it's supposed to be high of 77, It'll low of 50. Snowing. 
They said it's supposed to be normal end of May weather. It's not supposed to... Today it was 89, tomorrow it's supposed to be 90. So it should be better. Um, if you watch our movie, it's now on YouTube. All you have to do, excuse me, is search Blasphemers, the movie, Fred Hunt, soccer movie, indoor soccer. You can find it on YouTube. Um, it's free. Um, but if you're in Germany, you can't watch you it. You cannot watch in Germany, um, Russia, Uzbekistan, Georgia. I and again, it's a few other small countries. But yes, it does say on there banned, and, but again, it's unrated with R-rated language. It, it, you're, there's no nudity, there's no violence in it, just language. So so would that be our Eastern Bloc friends? <laughs> yes, all, all our friends in the Eastern Bloc, sorry. 